Hello and happy Friday. And um, what I have here is, um, and I've shown this a few videos ago, it's my uh, copy of the Blue and the Gray novelization for the mini series that I liked a lot. And I'm showing you this because this is the main character, or the two main characters, Jonas Steele and um, John Geyser. And in the show, John is a sketch artist for Harper's Weekly, which is this paper. So um, the very, you know, one of the first major drawings he does is he does a, a sketch of Abraham Lincoln, and then he goes around drawing sketches of battles. He was at John Brown's trial. He was uh, at the surrender of Lee at Appomattox Courthouse. So anyway, um, as a big fan of this show, um, I, you know, I, I loved the idea of John's character. So I made it a point in my life to collect as many copies of Harper's Weekly as I could. And I just wanted to show them to you tonight on this Friday night. Um, and, um, a lot of times, like, my parents would take me to a Civil War battlefield. We'd drive, like, to Shiloh or, or something, for instance. And then, you know, I would go to the gift shop and buy these reprints of Harper's Weekly. And then, um, you know, back in the hotel room, I just couldn't wait to open up that bag and, and pull these out and read them. So, um, I just thought I would quickly show you some of my copies of Harper's Weekly and the artwork in them. So, this is the paper, Harper's Weekly, A Journal of Civilization, New York, Saturday, September 3rd, 1864. And on the cover, we have General Sherman's campaign, Council of War held at General Woods headquarters, um, sketched by Theodore R. Davis. And there's clearly William Sherman. Mm. And if you look at the picture, you can see the house behind them, very well drawn. Uh, General Sherman's staff and this conference, you see that they're bringing the drinks. Um, and the thing about having a sketch artist as opposed to a photographer, because they couldn't print photographs back then, is it was immediate. You had an immediate reaction, but also... You know, obviously, General Sherman, if there was something that he didn't want people to see, he would tell the, the sketch artists not to include it or to maybe include something that wasn't there. And they even showed that in The Blue and the Gray in one of the first scenes when he meets Jonas Steele uh, at John Brown's trial and he's drawing pictures. Jonas meets him later on in a, at a bar that night and he asks if he could sort of alter his appearance so people wouldn't see that he was at the trial. So anyway, and that kind of, of course, John, John agreed to because, you know, Jonas asked him in a very gentlemanly way. He, he wasn't threatening him or anything. So, and then they became best friends. But um, this is what the paper looks like. A lot of text. And the first thing that, st that strikes me when I read these papers is, you know, this is 1864. This is probably one of the lowest periods of the war in terms of, like, the pure brutalness. Because the war had been going on long enough where hatred had already set in between the two sides. But you do notice that life is still going on, uh, particularly in the North. You have poetry. You have, you know, uh, events being discussed. So there's still a whole world happening. But obviously the war is casting a shadow over everything and it doesn't take long to turn the page and see war news, pictures of supply wagons, um, campaigns on the water. We have more articles and you can literally just sit back and read these and that's what I used to do. There's also drama in these like... Um, running series of dramatic stories so it wasn't just news and then most issues had like a really fantastic um centerfold kind of um of great artwork and this is a really stirring naval picture of farragut's fleet passing the forts and obstructions at the entrance of mobile bay um yes you know this is the point in the war when um Mobile Bay was a very, you know, one of the last strategic forts of the South. My home state, Alabama. 
And then you have more stories like This is Quite Alone by George Augustus Sala. You know, so people have something to read. And here is Compromise with the South, dedicated to the Chicago Convention. And here is um, um, this is a political cartoon. So what we see here is the Columbia crying over the graves of Union heroes who died in a useless war. And then you see this one-legged, um, possibly one-armed soldier with his head hanging low, shaking hands with a proud, haughty Jefferson Davis wearing his Confederate uniform. Of course, he was the president of the Confederacy. And um, you see all of the devastation. So basically, Harper's Weekly was showing that they were not in favor. You can also see that the U.S. flag is upside down. And here is the uh, Confederate flag. And um, that was a very biting bit of uh, political cartooning right there uh, from some of the uh, issues at the Chicago Convention. And here's a view in the tent in which the Democratic Convention is to be held at Chicago. Clinton Vallenham. Uh, Fernando Wood, if you saw the movie Lincoln, you uh, remember his character as um, one of the uh, um, congressmen who was opposing Lincoln's 13th Amendment. And in the end, we get to ads, like all papers, um, toothpaste, um, General Wadsworth's funeral march. Um, this is music, sheet music, and the thing was, is there were a lot of funerals happening back then. Um, albums of the army so as i did point out that life was going on but you can't get away from the devastation that this war was happening you know you, you're seeing you know photographic albums for your loved ones away at war and, it, and you know next to gold pins and and you know other things regular day-to-day -day items um on the back Here's a scene from the drama in the paper. In the back, you could buy, purchase, you know, firearms. Um, these are steel collars for shirts because shirts didn't really have collars back then. And um, so that's a good typical um, 1864 Harper's. Now, here's one in 1861. Um this is uh, New York, Saturday, October 19th, 1861. The war just ramping up. And um, we have here on the cover Colonel Mulligan, Lieutenant Russell, United States Navy, who was burned to Judith at Pensacola. Uh, the rebel ex-governor Jackson of Missouri addressing Colonel Mulligan's troops after the surrender at Lexington. So the war is kind of starting. And we get our articles, poetry, and artwork. Um, and one thing I noticed looking through a lot of these papers, in towards the beginning of the war, you had more artwork like this that looked almost like statuary, you know, like the guy on the horse with his sword up in the air and the horse tr sort of prancing. And and then as you got later in the war, the images are much more kind of depressing, like we saw in the last paper. More mundane, you know, like just covered wagons, moving supplies, or a really harsh political cartoon showing all the devastation this war has caused. But the war had not been going on long at this point. So you see parades and and um, look at the juxtaposition between the statue, the equestrian statue here and the officers on their horses. So there's still sort of a war fervor going on where they didn't exactly um, have an, you know, an idea of how bad this was going to be. Here's some maps that you find a lot in, in these papers. Um, sort of a view, view of Jefferson City, Missouri, showing the new fortifications and the arrival and departure of troops. Here's um, 
the United States Treasury exterior and interior. So we get also some information about building construction. And train station, transportation, a steamboat. Some scenes, uh, arrival of the 49th Ohio Regiment, Louisville, Kentucky. The ironclad war steamer now building in Mystic, Connecticut. And here's a, an illustration from the drama that's inside the paper. And um, this is a political cartoon putting out the last peace pipe. And you see some firemen sort of like... Um, trying to put out the fire in this pipe that's being smoked. Um, there's a statue of Benedict Arnold in the back. The individual who's smoking the pipe, uh, I'm not sure, and I know a, quite a bit about the Civil War, but I'm not sure who that is, but it's probably someone who was viewed as a traitor, the placement of the Benedict Arnold statue. Here's a political cartoon about Lincoln uh, got the right weapon at last, and he's holding a bag that says National Loan. And you see Lincoln about to hit all of these cards, which represent um, tombs. Okay, he, yeah, these are the southern states. He was the governor of Georgia, Slido. These are uh, the governors of the Confederate states, the CSA. And he's going to knock over the stack of cards with the loan. Here's a... Uh, political cartoon of old success crossing the Potomac and still the war had was early in its stages so they're mocking um, all the Confederates making them have Jefferson Davis's goat beard and making them look like buffoons so the next copy um, this is June 20th 1863 in the middle of the war mm. A couple months after the Battle of Silo, which was a big turning point. Here we have um, the ironclad gunboat Cincinnati sunk at Vicksburg. This is after the Battle of the Monitor and the Merrimack, or or if you prefer, the Monitor and the Virginia. Um, the monster tent erected at Chicago for the Canal Convention. And we get to the paper itself. And some great artwork. So, and keep in mind, like I said, the video is about the sketches because I'm thinking about John Geyser, the character. So, I am focusing mostly on the artwork in this video. I'm just kind of cruising over the details. So, um, in case you're wondering if you have questions, please feel free to leave a comment about some of the actions being depicted. Uh, triumphal entry of the Army of Major General Banks into Alexandria, Louisiana, May 4th, 1863. And it's a great picture. We got a lot of sky in it. Another really good picture. You see the Spanish moss and everything. Departure of General Banks troops from Simmonsport, Louisiana for Fort Hudson, May 21st, 1863. Um, raising the stars and stripes over the capital of the state of Mississippi and the Battle of Jackson, Mississippi, May 14th, 1863 by General Crocker's division and um, destruction of rebel property at Jackson, Mississippi and the Battle of Champions Hill. And you can see the cannon firing and the horizon, the officers on horseback. And some more pictures. Um, this is the Battle of Black River Bridge, May 17th, 1863. Very stirring picture. This is a um, general view of um, Puebla, Mexico. 
and the French in Mexico, the mortar battery opening on the city of Puebla. So there's another war happening in Mexico this time that's being covered. And we get to the ads. Medicine, stomach bitters, ambrosia, cherry pectoral, and the peace preacher and his clerk, Reverend Fernando Wood. It's old Fernando again. Uh, peace on earth and goodwill to rebels, muscular disciples. That's so chorus singing. Um... Fernando Wood was portrayed by um, the a same actor who played Ronan the Accuser in Guardians of the Galaxy and Lincoln. But he was um, fervently a, uh, an, an obstacle for Lincoln in, in his attempts to pass the 13th Amendment. And for that reason, he was widely viewed as kind of treasonous. So this is New York, Saturday, October 31st, 1863. And we have um, the Army of the Cumberland, Destruction of the United States Wagons by Rebel Cavalry. And um, the Army of the Cumberland, Rebel Attack upon Wagons in Anderson's Gap. And you see the cavalry firing pistols directly at him at point blank range. The Army of the Cumberland, charge of the 1st Wisconsin and 2nd Indiana Cavalry on the Rebels, October 2nd, 1863. A very, very good picture here. Just, I mean, the detail is so well done. These artists were amazing, and they did this so quickly. If you haven't watched The Blue and the Gray, I highly encourage you to watch it and see what the... It's, it is mostly about a Civil War artist and how he the, the Civil War is seen through his eyes. It's really a brilliant miniseries. Uh, the Sioux War, Cavalry Charge of Silly's Brigade at the Battle of Whitestone Hill in September. And they're attacking Native Americans here. And it doesn't look... This looks very sympathetic, too. Um, it's showing the army being quite brutal. Um, you see the women and children running. It's not a very favorable picture here. Um... A uh, big fold-out picture of the Battle of Chickamauga. Thomas's men repulsing the charges of the rebels. And just an amazing picture. Think about all the work it went from delivery of this picture to engraving to printing. There was so much work that went into this. And they got these pictures out fast. They got these papers out quickly. So you could see... Um, as much as you could see without photographs and Sie Siege of Charleston a lot of pictures from the water to the coast and we get to the ads again the things you could buy mail order or so forth and on the back you have your political cartoon it says the state elections, uh, it looks like a pumpkin, but it's a head being planted. Pennsylvania, friend Ohio, I thought thee hadst got rid of this notorious weed, as I of mine, and yet I see an ugly pumpkin growing upon thy land. Ohio, not upon my land, I guess. <laughs> it's the Valendenham pumpkin, Clement Valenham, um, as I've tossed over into my neighbor's field, and he... He's been in tuck, poor, tuck where you see among the Kennedy thistles. So. Then you can order roller skates. Now, this is another, uh, this isn't Harper's, this is Frank Leslie's. Another competing paper that uh, pretty much had the same format to a T. Even the he header is very similar. Uh, but. Frank Leslie's has a uh, Washington, D.C. picture. Uh, it's a much different font. and But the artwork is very similar. Um, this is about the Siege of Vicksburg. 
July 25th. Um, but the siege of Vicksburg uh, ended in July 4th. So this is, you know, about 21 days after the fact. Also, around that time, um, let's see. No, we may, I may be thinking about it. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was July 4th, I believe, when Vicksburg happened. Um, some artwork. The art is very good in Frank Leslie's. Um, summer retreats. Uh, Torton's Hotel, New Haven, Connecticut. So a luxury hotel. Easy. Life went on. Then you got the soldiers in the trenches here. And as you can see, it's very much like Harper's Weekly, the layout. A very good picture here with the shadow. Siege of Vicksburg, life in the trenches. Um, the life in the trenches was very, very tough in Vicksburg. Uh, they lived in, they dug caves into uh, the coast wall and lived eating mule meat and rat meat and even worse things. Um, invasion of Pennsylvania, the Battle of Gettysburg, also happening around July 4th. Um, <clears throat> you might recognize some of these scenes from Gettysburg. I believe that this is where General Buford observed and waited uh, for to be um, General Reynolds to come to support. And qu quite a lot of scenes. Uh, the Great Riot in New York, the scenes of... It was a this was an eventful July and the New York riots. I think that was depicted in a uh, movie um, Gangs of New York. The riots because they didn't want to get drafted. So there was a lot going on. And in fact, so much so that you know, here's another scene of uh, Gettysburg. The charge at Cemetery Hill. Siege of Vicksburg. So, I mean, we're alternating between Vicksburg and Gettysburg. Two major battles happening at the same time. There's McPherson and Cross killed at Gettysburg and James McPherson I believe would be killed in Atlanta the next year he was under Sherman and we get to the ads very similar to Harper's Weekly and as, as like Harper's Weekly there's a political cartoon on the back it says a, a prudent proceeding excited New Yorker look here your state's invaded it's soil polluted what are you going to do Old Ephraim to his son. Son Ephraim, send for the New Yorkers and the Jersey men to fight for us while I and thou mark up the prices. So they're criticizing probably having to do with the draft riots. Now this paper is post-Civil War. Um, here's another Leslie's. This is um, War Incidents. Reaping a crop of Cesesh oats. So contraband no um it's some really good artwork again uh, I feel like this page this is 341 but what I guess they pulled it I kind of wish they hadn't done it like this because you got to remove this section to see this whole picture here. But that's okay. Because here's a, a nice picture of a steamboat. Um, the national troops landing on the Kentucky shore opposite Cairo for the purpose of building Fort Holt, new, nearly, now nearly finished. And this real stirring picture here 
is um, the Great Bridge of Boats, a mile in Lanos, recently built in the National for National Forces across the Ohio River from Paducah to the Illinois Shore Passage of the 1st Division of the Illinois Artillery and Infantry. And quite a lot of beautiful drawings. I noticed the last issue of Frank Lessie's also had some, you know, took a break of a lot of the war and drew a lot of pretty things like hotel retreats and stuff. The Battle of Lexington, Missouri right here in very, very stirring two-page spread. And um, Deputy Sheriff Frederick Volt, candidate for the office of Sheriff of New York. Here's a place to the the city cemetery of New Orleans um, where, you know, they have to bury folks above ground in New Orleans because of the water table. If you've ever been in New Orleans and see them cemeteries, it's pretty, it's pretty creepy. And I remember the first time I went there and we saw the cemeteries from the road. That was way back in the 80s and I thought it was very creepy. Here's the political cartoon featuring Abraham Lincoln. And I'm sorry, featuring Jefferson Davis. Uh, it says, Jeff at the receipt of customs or southern taxes being paid in kind. Um, kid gloves for privateer service. Dinner pills for the troops. So they're showing the inequalities of how the troops um, were given the lowest of the low while other people were treated like humans. Um, let's see. This is eighteen six August first, eighteen sixty three. Um, the Rebel General Bowen and Colonel Montgomery arriving at General um, Burbage's headquarters. And here we have the capture of Vicksburg. Following up on Vicksburg uh, between General Grant and uh, Pemberton, they called him Pim, to settle the terms of surrender. You see Grant in his usual state of. Uh, very casual looking with a cigar. Um, Grant was a very unassuming and modest uh, ger general. He was refreshing change from McClellan, Burnside, and many of the other generals who were viewed as, um, you know, um, arrogant and preening and so forth. Grant was just a, a very working man soldier. And a lot of pictures of the... Uh, draft riots, more of the draft riots of New York, trashing, looting, the police having to go out there, kind of fictionally de depicted in gangs of New York. I don't believe they ever fired the naval cannons into New York, but um, here's the surrender of Vicksburg, the rebels marching out and stacking arms. And the surrender of Vicksburg. View of the city from the riverbanks from part of the river batteries. Ah, that coffee's so good. It's so tired. Okay. Um, the capture of Vicksburg, Major General McPherson of Grant's army and his chief engineers. And we've saw McPherson in last paper more on the capture of Vicksburg some ironclads the riots in New York the rioters burning and sacking an orphan asylum for African Americans very uh, one of the very terrible things that happened during the New York riots and um, Sterling's Ambrosia the ads and the political cartoon very very upsetting and this was a very difficult time of the war in fact at this point it, it was believed that Lincoln probably wouldn't even be reelected with all of the um, stuff going on now here's a this has been different this is and you don't find very many of these because this is a Confederate newspaper this is the Southern Illustrated published in Richmond Saturday November 8th 1862 this is closer to the beginning of the war. Um, 
this is um if we look at the artwork it's the header is much much different it's a little cruder it's not as well done or as detailed they didn't have the same resources um I'm trying to see how much Harper's cost. This was 15 cents. Um, Frank Leslie's was six cents in the North. So it was cheaper. Eight cents for this Frank Leslie's. Um, I don't see the price on the Harper's. But I'm guessing it was five or six cents. Whereas in the South, the inflation was skyrocketing even at this point or so much so, the, so many of the resources were being diverted to the war that you know every the cost of everything was higher so in this issue we're talking about Vicksburg before it's fallen as you can see also the paper doesn't have as many pages or as many illustrations and as I said it's because they had more rationing the artwork was not nearly as good as you can see <clears throat> um there is drama like like the harper's weekly here's a picture of braxton bragg that fort bragg is named after but this is from the uh drama featured in the paper and um some war news about the cavalry there's some quizzes and there's some ads in the back um and then we can see a little bit of what was happening if you were living in the confederacy at this time in 1862 uh you could buy a, a victor hugo's les miserables um there's theater productions the broad street theater um, 12th week of the season, um, great success of the Grand Corps de Ballet and the tableau of the Bonnie Blue Flag was playing at the theater. And I'm trying to see what kind of like cultural nightlife there's a, there's not a, a lot because this, the South was kind of, you know, whereas the North had so many resources and men and equipment and industry the south had to put all everything they had into the war now this is one of the first ones i ever bought right here um because this was i purchased this at the shiloh battlefield and this is the heroes of pittsburgh landing that is also pittsburgh landing and shiloh were the same battle it was called Shiloh in the north, and ironically, it was called Pittsburgh Landing in the south, but they're referring to it in this paper as Pittsburgh Landing. Um, William Harvey Land Wallace was killed. Um, McClernand, McCook, General Ulysses S. Grant, when he was finally coming out, this is when he was first becoming a big deal. Before him, um, Beauregard, I'm sorry, that was the South. Before Grant, um, McClellan was the, the top officer in the Army. And uh, Don Carlos Puel. Um, Sherman was also coming into his own. Um, but this is when, before Grant really had a high position. And this Shiloh was his first big uh, breakout victory. So it's a fairly thick issue. And we see some pictures from the Battle of Shiloh. This is Shiloh Meeting House. And see, Shiloh is a Hebrew word that means place of peace. In, uh, very ironic. Um, there was a small church here and the battle was waged all around it. Uh, if you watch the movie called How the West Was Won, they show how the church was used as a field hospital in a real graphic scene when it shows the surgeon struggling to you know, person after person being brought in. General Buell's army crossing Duck River, Columbia, Tennessee to reinforce General Grant. And um, the second trip of the Merrimack scenes at and around Fortress Monroe. The Merrimack was an ironclad. Uh... Here is, I believe this is 
uh, Tallahassee, Florida. The Senator Yuley's letter, we, we reproduce here with a facsimile of a remarkable letter from Senator Yuley to Joseph Finnegan of the Sovereignty Conference of Florida. This letter, which reveals the crooked purpose of the traitors who have plunged the country into the present war, was found by the correspondent of the New York Times at um, Fernandina, Florida, when the town was occupied by Union forces. The following were the resolutions enclosed in the letter. Yeah, so the war is still fairly new at this point. So you could say they're prosecuting the war as it's happening. These are more pictures from the Battle of Shiloh. No, 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 no. I, I say correctly. Uh, this is Yorktown, Virginia. And here's the drama uh, section. And these Fort Pulaski. And the ads, the political cartoon um, to Corinth. And this is uh, a political cartoon about the Battle of Shiloh, how the rebels win victories. And it shows them all running. Um, Hurrah, we've got another victory, he says, as they're all running away. Now, the way the battle played out is the first day, the, the southern troops were commanded by Albert Sidney Johnston. And uh, he was at that time considered the greatest officer of either side well anyway he was fatally wounded on the first day of the battle and he and general his second command general Beauregard took over Beauregard was highly regarded at this point but his biggest mistake was he delayed advancing giving uh time for uh Grant's army to uh reinforce the Union troops and then eventually beat uh, Beauregard and the Southerners on the second day. So they would have won if Beauregard had not have hesitated. Um, this is November 28th, 1863. And what we're looking at is uh, General Banks' expedition of the Brazos Santiago, Texas. So we're all the way where I used to live by Bryan College Station. It's very faded at this this issue. Um, and the artwork. The Army of the Cumberland capture of rebel rifle pits in Lookout Valley. Now another full page spread here. Uh, general view of Chattanooga and Union encampments. Rebel army beyond belt of timber from our signal stations. And um, the army of the Potomac capture of Cedric's core of the rebel works on the Rappahannock near the railway bridge. And we get to the ads. And the political cartoon, this one features Lincoln uh, drawing things to a head. Dr. Lincoln to smart boy of the shop. Mild, applic uh, mild applications of Russian salve for our friends over the way and heavy doses and plenty of it for the southern patient. And he's showing um, cannonballs and so forth. So it's kind of gloating about the victory at Shiloh. Um, the victories that had been happening that year, things were turning around. Actually, it was also November 63, Gettys, I'm sorry, it wasn't just Shiloh, it was Shiloh's 1862, Gettysburg and Vicksburg had already happened. Now, these other issues I'll save for a different video, but I thought I would wind up the video showing you something else. As we looked at all of the uh, newspaper pictures, I think it takes away from the realism of the war. So I wanted to, to wind up with some pictures taken by Matthew Brady and his team 
in this book by Webb Garrison called Brady's Civil War, a deluxe uh, photograph book. And um, these are actual photographs of the war. There's General Grant in real life. There's a, uh, um, this Civil War sketch artist for Harper's Weekly, I always kind of feel like they modeled John Geyser's um, wardrobe after that. Because that's exactly how he dresses in the blue and the gray. Um, some pictures of Abraham Lincoln. That's actually Matthew Brady right there, the photographer. Now, he didn't personally take all these pictures, but he supervised them. This is a picture of his studio in Broadway, the Brady Gallery. Uh, Lincoln, and look at this picture. Look how tall he was. Um, and to his left, unfortunately, it's in, it's in the crease, but that's Alan Pinkerton, the head of the Secret Service, or what would become the Secret Service. General Joseph Hooker. That's uh, General Jeb Stewart, Winfield Scott Hancock on the hero of Gettysburg, one of the heroes of Gettysburg. Um, uh, there's General George Custer. There's Phil Sheridan, who also would figure in prominently in the Plains Indian Wars, Abe Lincoln. Ambrose Burnside, a uh, very, very flawed <clears throat> commander. Vice President of the Confederacy, Alexander Stevens. In the movie Lincoln, he was portrayed by uh, Jackie Earl Haley. And he personally met with Lincoln to negotiate a, a, a truce, if you recall in that movie, aboard the... Uh, General Grant's floating headquarters. But I just kind of felt like I needed to show some real, after seeing all of the sketches, to follow up with some real photographs. There's another picture of Custer right here. William Sherman, General Grant, here, Grant, there's Sherman. I always thought Sherman looked a little bit like Vincent Van Gogh. He was redheaded. George Pickett. Scenes of camp life. Playing around right here. This was a very photographed war. And if you don't believe me, the whole Civil War documentary by Ken Burns is nothing but photographs of the war. Here's a picture of Grant meeting General McClellan. Um, I believe this is during the Peninsula Campaign. Look how he towered over everybody. He was a very tall man. This was uh, accused of being a staged photo, but the interesting thing about this photo of the dead uh, Confederate troop, and if you see this in the Civil War documentaries, there's also a photo of the same person in life that they show before this photo. So it just so happened that they found a picture of that soldier when he was alive. It makes it very creepy. A lot of these sad pictures were 
shocking to people because it brought the war home to people when they went to these galleries and saw. And that was a, something that really woke people up to the devastations of the war that they only read about in the papers that I showed you first. When they actually saw pictures like this of soldiers crowding into trenches or dead soldiers or this the devastation the huge cannons the pontoon bridges all of the engineering that went into this war all of the um resources these mountains of cannonballs these giant mortars And the reality made people rethink the war a lot by seeing these pictures by Brady. You really see how big these cannons were. You see how they dwarfed the men around them. The Civil War has been romanticized a lot in my lifetime. Off and on and back and forth, you know, depending on what decade we're living in. And... But I noticed one thing, regardless of how it's been portrayed, it's been romanticized either way. And, um, but I think that we should never forget that this was probably one of the most miserable, awful periods in the history of this country. I don't think there's ever been anything comparable to it. Uh, just pure, I mean, Americans killing Americans wholesale. Just pure, utter hatred and violence and bloodshed and even after the war ended it, lingering hatred it the he, the wounds even where i live in alabama many wounds still have not healed and these things are generation affecting so when people think that their differences with their neighbors are so important that they need to resort to violence they should really think about it harder because this is this is the end result of that right here. This is. And war has a way of making everything not matter. Because these people don't even have names anymore. They're just subjects in pictures, devastated and torn apart, and not no longer hu human. And that's what war does, is it tears the humanity away from all of us in every way and that's and I'm a guy I'm a veteran I and I can tell you firsthand that that's exactly what it is here's uh the war in the air there was actually a balloon core on both sides during the war that was also featured in um the balloon the gray The Blue and the Gray had a really remarkable thing about it, um, and I'm pushing, I'm plugging this this mini series again, because uh, unlike a lot of other things, um, it starts out, it shows the war start out, you know, kind of <sighs> colorful and almost fluffy and bubbly, and as we go farther into the show, it gets darker and darker and more awful and more depressing, until there's a scene towards the end when. John and Jonas are in a tent. Jonas is suffering from gangrene. He's probably going to lose his arm. And John is suffering from mental illness. And Jonas looks into John's sketchbook and sees these horrific pictures he'd been drawing. And um, they're not even of anything real anymore. John's now drawing his nightmares. And this is one a, a very powerful scene in the show. And I hope you take time to watch the show if you get a chance to. Because when he looks in that sketchbook, he sees, because at this point, John's already seen his brother die. He's seen his sister lose her mind in Vicksburg. He's been basically disowned by his family. He's seen his cousins die on the, on the northern side because he was from a family that had um, members on both sides. And he saw his best friend hung. And um, so at... At a certain point, John has a mental breakdown, and um, he almost loses everything by the end of the show, including the love of his life and his mind. So it was a really well-done show, and it used those dramatic tools to, to, to show that awfulness of the war in a, really, in a very clever way. By the end of the show, you do feel a sense of exhaustion. 
um, for how brutal and awful the war was on the screen. And it makes you think of how brutal it was in real life. Dorothea Dix, the uh, nurse. I'm sorry, Clara Barton. I get confused sometimes. Um, there's George McClellan. He tried to run for president against Abraham Lincoln. There's uh, Lincoln's son, Tad. You might have seen him in the movie Lincoln. And more bodies on the field. It's there's some some graphic pictures of uh, this is the most, uh, in my opinion. These are some of the most disturbing pictures. These are um, bodies being dug up from a battle, and they were from a, a battle from before. And all of the graves, all of the embalming tents being set up everywhere, and then. This is uh, Richmond just completely devastated. All the buildings hollowed out. Trains on the ground. Bridges destroyed. It's a very, very sad time period for everyone alive at that time. This is showing what's left of cities. Big columns standing with nothing around them. This is what the country looked like by the end of the war. Just savaged. There's Lincoln and in the tent with McClellan. General Robert E. Lee. And that's the end of this uh, book. This is Brady's Civil War, a collection of photographs by Matthew Brady and his assistants. So, wow, we cover a lot in this video. And I really do enjoy um, these Civil War videos uh, to talk about it. Um, but either way, um, I hope that you got something out of the video and enjoyed it and um i hope you like my channel please consider subscribing if you haven't done so uh give me a thumbs up on the video and leave a comment or a question or or if i made a mistake please feel free to correct you know leave a, a correction um i appreciate comments i'm always learning and i'm i make mistakes like everybody else so um but i when people you know and i learn from a lot of you um, so it's, I appreciate and enjoy, uh, almost all the comments I get. So anyway, um, that's my video for Friday and I will see you again on Sunday. Bye.